Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel What the Bag. Today we're going to be making a head bag for a fursuit and I think this is like a perfect way to protect your fursuit head if you're traveling or even just to like give them a nice little space to live when you're not wearing them. Um, it's helpful because it can protect them from getting dirt or like whatever is out in the world on them and it just looks really nice too and this tutorial is going to be super easy I promise and you'll be able to make a cute little bag to put your friend in. The materials that you will need for this project are quilted broadcloth. This is a fabric that has multiple layers to it. I got this at a scrap store near me, so it was discounted. Um, if you have a fabric that is not um, like cotton on both sides, you will need to get a lining. Um, you don't have to, but I think it makes it look nicer in the end. Um, so you may need a lining, you may not if your fabric has um, cotton on both sides. You'll also need saran wrap, sharpie, a ballpoint pen, pins, tape, paper, some fabric only scissors, and some tape only scissors. This is really important because you don't want to get tape gunk in your fabric scissors because then they won't be able to cut as easily. And finally you'll need your little friend, your fursuit head. So today I'm going to be making a head bag for Wes. This is actually not my fursuit. This is my roommate's fursuit. He is the person who convinced me to become a furry. So I found this fabric and it fits the vibe of the character. So I figured I'll do this as a little surprise for him. So um, this is Wes. He's a weasel. He's a very sneaky boy, as you can see. Um, and he was made by Lomonosov Fursuits. Um, so go ahead and check them out if you like the style of this fursuit. Um, and yeah, let's get on to making the head bag. So the first step is to just like cover the head in saran wrap or paper and duct tape and like get the shape down. Um, it's similar to working on a fursuit head, but um, you only really need to pattern half of it because it's um, a symmetrical fursuit. But if you have an asymmetrical one, you're probably going to want to do both. Um, but you want at least to have a seam down the middle even if you don't only pattern half of it um you're gonna want that to be in half because that's where your zipper is gonna go so you can get your head out of the bag um for wes because he has um little whiskers i put a plastic dome over it this is from one of those like mystery box things like the toys just to protect those when it's in there and these are gonna just like stay with the bag when it's stored even if wes isn't in it um, but yeah, that's gonna just protect it. That way he can go in the car or a bin or wherever we want to put him without his whiskers getting crushed. Because I know that's really important to Kyle. Okay, so next, it's kind of difficult, but you have to kind of plan where your seams are gonna be. And I just draw these on with Sharpie. Um, make sure you label the different parts of the face as well, because that makes it easier to put it back together. And depending how angular your shape is, you might have more pieces or less pieces, but um, one of my best tips is if there's a point like this where multiple pieces intersect, like this one you can see it has three separate pieces, just draw a line with a circle and that way you know where to line up those seams. And you can do the same for darts too, like as you can see here I predicted a dart, so I put a line with a circle on the other piece, that way I know that the dart lines up right there. And once you have that done, you can cut them all out. And I recommend pinning them back on the head. As soon as you like cut the piece off, pin it back on. That way you know exactly where it goes. Before you start taking the pieces off to trace them, you're gonna wanna mark the middle somehow. And I usually just do a zigzag like this all the way around the middle. And you're gonna wanna do that because when you trace them, these need more seam allowance than the other seams because it's going to have a zipper on it. So just like do a zigzag all the way along the middle seam, all the way around the head. And then when you cut them out, you want to add about twice as much seam allowance as you would on the other seams. Just a little tip for when you're like cutting the tape off, put your hand under it and then cut. That way you can like make sure you're not cutting the fur because you really don't want to nick your little baby. Okay, so now that I cut them all out and pinned them back on, I know exactly where they go. And I'm going to be using um, this fabric, which unfortunately it's only got like fabric on one side and this is like batting on the other. So I am going to be using a liner. If you bought fabric that has two sides, you don't need to do a liner. But 
it'll basically be easier um, if you do have one with two sides. Now we're gonna just take these pieces and we're gonna trace them on here. We're gonna trace them once with the tape facing up and once with the tape facing down. That way we have one for the left and right side. If you have a head that is asymmetrical, you're gonna want to trace every piece tape down um, on your fabric. And that way you know that it's gonna like fit your asymmetrical head. But since it's symmetrical, it doesn't really matter. You just do one one way and then one the other way. If you don't have a lining, so for example, if this fabric had this fabric on both sides um, and not this batting, um, you could just trace it once on here, tape up, and then flip it once tape down and then cut it out. Since I need a lining, I'm only gonna trace my pieces on the lining and then I'm gonna just place them on top of this and cut out this fabric to match and pin them together. So I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit. So here's what I was saying. I have to put the liner on as if it is another layer of fabric on the inside. So I only trace the liner and then I just lay it on top, pin it down and cut the piece out. Um, you're also going to want to label your pieces. I'm just labeling within the seam allowance. Um, so yeah, and you can also see here, I kind of translated um, the marking. So this is that line with a circle marking, um, and this is the middle. I kind of just put dots on that. You, you could do the zigzag if you wanted again, but um, then you can see that I put about twice as much seam allowance on the middle seam as the other ones. Okay, so I now have all my pieces layered, cut out, and pinned. Um, and the next thing I suggest you do is separate the pieces that have darts, which are these little triangle shapes, from uh, the other ones. And sew the darts first. Um, so you're going to want to basically fold the piece over like that. Well, it's not very well lined up right now, but you would basically fold it over and then sew that and then kind of just piece them all together um, like you would on a fursuit head for like fur or like on a body or whatever part of a fursuit you may be used to making. Um, so do all the darts first and then attach each piece for each side of the head, but do not sew anything on the middle seam just yet. So you're gonna be like constructing two half covers for like each side of the head. Okay, so it's about an hour and a half Two hours after I took that last clip and I have all of these um, sewn together. The only thing is since I put that like dome under the saran wrap I have a weird little piece here that's like too awkward to sew on the sewing machine so I just did um, a little line around to connect these two fabrics um, so it won't like shift and I'm gonna hand sew that into this hole um, after I trim this bit down. Um, but yeah, um, after that, we're going to add the zipper, which I totally forgot to say before, but, um, you will need a zipper or some type of closure. You could do buttons, but I'm not as familiar with those, so I'm not going to instruct you how to do them. Um, this is a 26 inch zipper. It's a sport zipper, which is just this large tooth kind. This is the kind that we use on fursuits and it's the kind I recommend you use for a case as well, because if the fur gets stuck in it, it won't like damage the zipper or the fur. You can just unzip it and then take the fur out. So yeah, um, I would recommend getting one that's gonna go at least halfway around the middle um, measurement of your case. So that would be like, if you measure all the way around, um, take that measurement, divide it by two, and that's um, the smallest zipper I would recommend using because you really wanna be able to take the head out easily um, and not have to like, shove it through a small opening. <laughs> so you can see here I have one half of it um, on him. I finished the other half too but now I'm just gonna mark where I'm gonna put the zipper. So basically you just want to lay it on. Um, I recommend starting at like the forehead and then going back and around the bottom. I don't necessarily recommend putting the zipper over the snout because depending what it's made of it could probably like leave an indent on it. So start at the um, forehead and go back around, um, mark each of those, and then we're going to attach the zipper to either side. So some people might um, sew this on the sewing machine, but I think that <laughs> sewing it by hand gives me a lot more control over it and making sure that it lines up right. So I'm going to hand sew one side on 
fit it on the head again and put the other side of the um, case on and then I'm gonna like basically just line it up and pin the other side and then unzip this um, and sew it to the other side and once that's done you basically just fold it in half um, like right sides together and sew along the edge of the opening that doesn't have the zipper to attach the two sides together um, you might also find it really helpful to add a strap to your bag. So I just have this nylon webbing here. I cut it. I used a lighter or you could use the stove to just like melt the ends a little bit. And then just pin it on. I usually would do it like right along the zipper because I find it easier to hold a vertical strap. But you could totally do it sideways. Um, just sew it in like a square a few times and then an X in the middle and that's what I usually do to keep it on. So to put it on you want to put it over the nose first and then lift each side up over the ear. Sorry I'm filming this one-handed and then you can zip it up and you'll be done. So yeah this is what the finished product looks like. Um, again this will protect your suit from any spills or like stains or just like random gunk from when you're traveling makes it really easy to just throw them in the back and since wes has these plastic domes in here he's gonna be uh protected in terms of his whiskers and not getting crushed so yeah if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more um I will give you another extra tip for reaching the end of the video and that is that most fursuit heads are large enough on the inside that you can fit both hand paws in there. So if you have a head bag like this you can put your head and hands in it and just bring your tail separately or if your tail is small enough you might be able to fit in the head as well. And yeah I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye!